How's it going everyone? I am Walter the Film Hermit and today I'm going to talk about the weird curious story of the James Bond steelbooks. A uh, very weird release schedule how they did things so I'm going to delve into it and show you which ones I have. If you like my videos please like, comment, subscribe, help the channel so much. So James Bond is actually one of my favorite franchises of all time. Um, I just I actually grew up with it from the time I was in elementary school. My first James Bond experience was Roger Moore and Octopussy. And then uh, when I got a little older in the 90s, I discovered Laserdisc and actually got into watching all of the Sean Connerys and actually watching all of the um, Roger Moores and, and, and then started watching them in the theaters. No, actually Octopussy we saw in the theater. Yeah, so Octopussy, Video Kill saw in the theater and then every James Bond movie after that point I saw in the theater. So we're gonna go talk about the Steelbooks because what I like to do, at least a few years ago, my plan was is all my favorite franchises to have them on Steelbook. Uh, but it's been kind of hard to collect James Bond on Steelbook because of this crazy weird release schedule and everything they did. So for this video, what I'm gonna do is, normally I would just kind of hold them up for you, but I believe uh, I wanna do some close-ups. Uh, some of them have artwork that go from the front and the back and some of them, um, they don't and none of them have artwork on the inside they only have the 007 symbol so for most of these i'm not going to open them up but i'm going to talk about the release schedule and basically um the complications of collecting this film on these films on 4k actually not even 4k because a lot of them are already available in 4k so we're going to go into we're going to go to the close-ups right now and i'll go through the whole history of it okay so when these steelbooks originally came out in 2015 it was because of the release of the Daniel Craig uh, movie Spectre. So this is actually one of the first times since the Roger Moore films that they actually had Spectre in the movies uh, for some legal reasons, which I'll go over in another video. But the marketing plan was to release all of the Bond films on Steelbook that mentioned Spectre in the past. So one of the first movies that mentioned Spectre was going to be from Russia with Love. So the other thing that they did that made these steelbooks special was the fact that they all had not original poster artwork, but they had artwork from the title sequence. James Bond is known very well for the, the amazing uh, title sequences that they designed. And I'm gonna put the, uh, the name of the person that did all the original title sequences right here on the screen. So he did an amazing job. It's pretty iconic in film history. And these are all stills or shots from um, this, the artwork that he did for the title sequences. So this is the second James Bond movie from Russia with Love. Dr. No is actually the original film that they did in the franchise, but it doesn't mention... Well, actually, that's the thing that really throws me because Dr. No, they do mention Spectre, uh, but they didn't put this in the original steelbook run. So, oh well, let's get... But they only mention it once, but again... This is what they decided to do. So the second James Bond film starring Sean Connery from Much of a Love, this is the artwork from the title sequence that's on the steelbook. So as I mentioned before, we're not gonna really be going inside these steelbooks because there's really no artwork inside. One thing I will note though, the color of the 007 inside the artwork kind of tries to match the color that's on the steelbook. Also, these are all gloss steelbooks. So um, you see a lot of fingerprints on this one because it's the black one. I need to get a special cloth to try to get those off and all the cloths I have actually aren't really working very well. So let me set this aside here. And the second one that they did was, uh, the next movie in the franchise should be Goldfinger, but Goldfinger did not get a steelbook release in the US. There is a UK release that you can get, but does not follow the same um, scheme as these. It's not based on the title sequence. I'm gonna put the artwork for Goldfinger up here. I've been thinking about picking that one up because it's readily available, um, but honestly, waiting for them to do another one here. So. We're going to go through that. In 2015, these are the still books that they released. So Thunderball would have been the fourth film in the franchise. And that's the artwork there. I love how the air, air bubbles from underwater come up from the side there. That's actually a really cool idea. So this is the fourth James Bond film. And then we've got You Only Live Twice. Also stars Sean Connery. This is the fifth film in the franchise.
Then the sixth film in the franchise is starring George Lazenby, which is actually one of my favorite James Bond films, which actually surprised me because when I remember when I first rented this on Laserdisc, everyone was like, oh, this is the bad one. I'm like, well, no, it's not. It's actually pretty well done. Honor Majesty's Secret Service, and this is pulled directly from the title sequence. They got the clock here from the title sequence on here. So Diamonds Are Forever um, is the film where Sean Connery came back, and this would have been the seventh James Bond film, which the first time I watched it, I didn't love it, but because it's kind of cheesy and kind of dated, but like it grows on you. Um, I think most people were just happy that Sean Connery came back. A little trivia note, they actually gave Sean Connery a million dollars to get him to come back because he originally said he would never come back, and he did. So that's nice artwork there. And then the only Roger fil Moore film that they did was For Your Eyes Only because that was the only one that had um, Blofeld in the film in the opening sequence. So this has never been one of my favorite James Bond movies. It can be a little slow, a little boring. They were trying to bring things down back to earth because the one before it was Moonraker, which is actually one of my favorite Bond films. And I understand the reasons for why they did what they did, but it's never been um, one of my favorites, honestly. Um, but there are some things I do like about it. Then we're going to move on to the Daniel Craig films because... They skipped Timothy Dalton altogether and they skipped Pierce Brosnan altogether um, because there's no mention of Spectre in those films. Um, so this is Casino Royale. So this is pulled right from the opening sequence here. And I love how the artwork goes from the front to the back. Uh, one thing I did with these is I went ahead and put my 4K discs in here. For the time being, the only way to get the only James Bonds available in 4K are the Daniel Craigs. So that's Casino Royale. Also, they did re-release -re uh, 4K steelbooks for the Daniel Craig films, but Casino Royale and Quantum of Solace are sold out. You can only get Skyfall and Spectre, and they just have pictures of Daniel Craig on the front. Um, they don't have this artwork here, which I think is honestly better. This is Quantum of Solace. This is the second film starring Daniel Craig. And I really do like that. That's pulled directly from the title sequence. I just rewatched this the other day. I remember not loving this film the first time it came out, but it's grown on me over the years. Um, the only Daniel Craig one I, I really dislike, I'm not really crazy about Spectre, even though No Time to Die is so good, it actually makes Spectre better. Next film is gonna be Skyfall. I love this artwork, it's amazing. Um, some of these you can still get on Amazon. Um, some of the prices are low, some are expensive, but it all depends on which one you're looking at. But um, I'll put an image of like the 4K re-release here. Um, but I really do love this artwork here. So in 2015 is when Spectre came out. And then it, Spectre came out on home video the following year, 2016. So this came out after all of the other steelbooks came out. And the difference with this steelbook here is that it has some embossing, which is actually pretty cool. Even though I don't love this film, I really do love this steelbook. I love how it's got the title, and then the bullet hole in the glass is actually debossed inside the steelbook, which is actually pretty cool. No artwork inside, but the other cool thing is on the opposite side here, you have a bullet hole, which I love that. Such a great job. And then if I remember correctly, it does not have... It didn't have a DVD in there. There was only one spool, but I put my 4K in here. So that's the one for Spectre. And then um, I'll show the artwork for the last James Bond film after I go through all the other ones. Because, of course, the last James Bond film is a Daniel Craig, No Time to Die. That was released in 2021. We're going to open that up in a sec. We'll come back to this. Okay, so then... As I mentioned before, 2015, we got those sets of steelbooks. And then I was wondering, are we ever going to get the rest of them? Because there's a lot missing. And then in 2022, they announced in the UK, they're releasing more steelbooks. So, I mean, that's a pretty big gap in between releases. It's like seven years. It's like seven years in between releases. And I'm like, oh, that's a really long time to, to not have more steelbooks. 
But the first one, they finally did the original release, the first James Bond film, and they did it special and they gave it a special edition. It's actually a steel book and a slip box. Let's open it up and take a look at it. Um, and of course, the art scheme is exactly like all the other ones. We have images from the title sequence. Let's open this baby up. One thing I want to highlight that is different, and of course I put all these away, but you can tell here that the spine is actually different on the first set of releases. The 007 is bigger. Um, the, there's no Blu-ray symbol at the bottom. Uh, but also the paint on these are not gloss paint. They're all matte painted. But it still looks pretty nice. And, it's still, and of course, I just want them to be all on the same shelf. If I remember correctly, it's the same thing. There's no artwork inside except for the 007. But of course, that's better than it just being completely blank. But the slip box, same motif. This is from the title sequence. We got that on the back of the slip box. We have a nice booklet with Sean Connery on the cover. We got some nice artwork inside. Um, I think this is actually really great for collectors. I don't know if this is still available. I had to get this from the UK back in 2022. And I believe in here there's some art cards. Let's take a quick look. We got some art cards in here. Some posters from other countries. I don't have a lot of like special edition steel books, but for movies that are like, you know, my favorites, I'll pick them up, definitely. It uh, looks like there's a poster. Um, this is like the original poster from Dr. No. Let me see if I can open this quickly for you guys and not have it get ruined. Hopefully you guys can see all that. Is there anything on the back? No, original poster for Dr. No. And if I remember correctly, there was some type of, oh, you can build the um, the dragon. It's like a little cardboard thing of like the, the, the flame throwing thing they, they thought was a dragon on the island. And I'm never going to put that together. <laughs> so let's just put that back in there. I'm not dealing with all that. But first movie in the franchise is a special edition box set. A slip box, steel book edition. Worth picking up, I thought. So I got that. Let me set this aside here so I can show the other ones. Now... There were only two Sean Connery films missing in the Steelbook line. It was Goldfinger and Dr. No. So doc, remember Goldfinger, we have that one edition that doesn't match, and now we have Dr. No. So all the Sean Connerys um, are pretty much done, except for that one Goldfinger that doesn't match. So when it comes to Roger, and of course George Lazenby only had one. We got that one, and we got that one. Next would be Roger Moore. His first film was Live and Let Die. They still skipped that one. So his second film was The Man with the Golden Gun. Pretty simple. Um, not my favorite design. It's got the golden gun on it. Doesn't have really anything on the back. Um, gold art. It's okay. Um, not my favorite of the bunch. And then is it gold inside? No, it's kind of a reddish kind of gold color. Okay. So that's Man with the Golden Gun. And then the next film in Roger Moore's line would be The Spy Love Me, which I think is, of course, the best uh, one that he did. Not my favorite, but the, the best one that he did. Let me open that one up. I'm going to put my two favorites here. So my two favorites of Roger Moore would be The Spy Love Me. And it would be Moonraker, which I'm going to move this up so you can see them both. Honestly, when it comes to the James Bond films, Moonraker is pretty much the same movie as Spy Love Me, but it's a bit more fun. I think love Moonraker. Actually, a little trivia. Um, in Black Widow, Scarlett Johansson's character is actually watching Moonraker on her laptop when she's in the, in the very beginning when she's uh, hiding out, which I always think is funny. And she's like quoting lines from it. The next film in the franchise was going to be Octopussy. And no art on the back. I'm not going to flip that one open because there's really nothing to see. So that's the art for Octopussy. This one, For Your Eyes Only, was already in the, the still book line because that was the only Roger Moore they did. And the next movie was going to be A View to a Kill. Oh, when it's in my plastic sleeve, I can't see the, the girls' faces. I was always wondering what that was, but these are the girls dancing in the title sequence. It's just harder to see their lipstick when it's in my plastic case. And nothing on the back here at all, just, just the front. 
actually, so far, none of these have had any art on the back whatsoever. Um, this one kind of does. It kind of expands in the back a little bit in this area here. But Moonraker doesn't really have anything that spins over. So View to a Kill was the last Roger Moore film that he made that came out in 1985. 1987 would have been the first Timothy Dalton film. Uh, the artwork goes from front to back on this one. So it was really nice to finally get some Timothy Dalton James Bonds on Steelbook. I always liked Timothy Dalton a lot. And I've been watching a lot of uh, reactors that are watching the James Bond films right now. They've been, I guess they've been trending. And everyone is really positive with Timothy Dalton, which I love. The last film that he did was going to be License to Kill, which I think License to Kill is actually one of the best James Bond movies they ever made. Uh, has a real darker tone. Did terrible at the box office. And the main reason is because License to Kill came out in 1989, which is like one of the biggest summer seasons of all time in the history of all movies. And it was, just, it was the summer of... Batman 1989 and Lethal Weapon 2. I think it just got overcrowded and people just didn't check it out. But this movie is amazing. If you haven't seen it, check it out. I love this artwork right from the title sequence. I've probably said this a thousand times in the video, but I love how the artwork goes from front to back. I don't know why they didn't do this with all of them. Now we move on to the Pierce Brosnans. Pierce Brosnan did four James Bond movies. Um, Goldfinger, um, they made a steel book in the UK one time and it's completely out of print and no one sells it used. It's just people who have it, love it, and they want to keep it. Um, but that's the other one missing uh, from this steel book line is Goldeneye, uh, one of the most popular James Bond films of all time, which I'm kind of cool maybe not buying that one again for right now because honestly, of all the James Bond movies, this has the worst Blu-ray transfer of all of them, even though it's the most beloved film. They really need to go back and remaster that one. But this first steel book that they've done has been uh, in this line is Tomorrow Never Dies. This is the second film that he did. Uh, I believe this is the image of his watch from the title sequence. And then the third film that he made was The World Is Not Enough. And this is pulled from the title sequence. If I remember correctly, that was like a a match that was lighting. So then the last film that Pierce Brosnan did was uh, Die Another Day. Um, there is a still book available for that. Um, there were a few still books that were made a few years ago prior to 2015 that do have a picture of Bond for that film and a picture of the leading lady, the Bond girl with him. That artwork is, is nice, but there's no inner artwork in those. And some of those are selling for way too much money. Like they do have one for Live and Let Die, but it sells for like 120 bucks. Um, there is one for Die Another Day, but then because that's not really beloved Bond film, that one doesn't sell for a lot of money at all. And there is a Goldfinger one. There's a couple other ones too, but for right now, the only ones that are missing completely are gonna be um, Goldfinger from this line. And that's the one Sean Connery that's missing. And then the Live and Let Die uh, for Roger Moore. All the Timothy Daltons are done. The one George Lazenby is done. Um, all the Timothy, yeah, all the Timothy Daltons are done. And then there's the Golden Eye missing and Die Another Day missing. So there's just four and that's it. So I said that we would look at the artwork for the last Daniel Craig film. This one is a different release because this artwork was designed by Universal which I think is actually pretty cool. I don't know if I ever did a video when this was released, but this is a 4K still book. So there's a 4K disc in here and there's a Blu-ray disc in here. And the digital copy for some reason only worked with iTunes. Let's take a quick look here. So it's got him behind the wheel of the Aston Martin in the beginning, from the beginning title sequence of the uh, opening sequence of the film. Pretty cool. Let's take a look at the inside. I gotta pop these discs out of here so that you can see it. And the only one of the collection that has inner artwork. And I think I've mentioned this a thousand times before. I really hate steelbooks that have no artwork or have lame artwork on the side. 
This is what a steelbook is supposed to look like. It's supposed to have artwork of a clip from the film. That's what it's supposed to do. And the best is when it expands from left to right. So it has a picture of Bond with the new 007 in the um, last action sequence of the film. I think this is really good art. Um, let's cross our fingers and let's really hope that we get those last four steelbooks. Hopefully it won't take four years to get them. Or, I, I'm sorry, it won't take seven years to get them. So I hope you all like this unboxing video of the James Bond still books. Let me know in the comments if you have the still books, if you thought about picking them up, um, which movies would you want to pick up if you're not getting all of them? Uh, did you import them from the UK? Just let me know uh, how you feel about James Bond in general. If you like my videos, please like, comment, subscribe. Helps the channel so much. Thank you all for watching. Have a great day.